Welcome to my series of videos on Mathematics for Economists. In this group of videos I'm going to discuss the computation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors given a matrix and I'm going to go through a couple of typical examples of matrices, matrices you might encounter. Um, so I'm beginning with a matrix, let's call it M1, that is given by the rows 3, 0, 0, 2, 7, minus 2, minus 2, 0, and 5. And we're going to see that this is a matrix that corresponds to the plain vanilla case where we have distinct eigenvalues, in this case 3, and so we get three distinct and linearly independent um, eigenvectors that correspond to these three eigenvalues. And so we get um, the eigenvalue decomposition, but we're going to go through this now step by step. So we get the eigenvalues by evaluating the determinant of m1 minus lambda times the identity. This is 3 minus lambda, 0, 0, 2, 7 minus lambda, minus 2, minus 2, 0, and 5 minus lambda. I can see that if I expand the determinant along the first row, I only have to deal with one non-zero element here. The other two do not matter because they annihilate everything. And so I get 3 minus lambda times the determinant of the submatrix that results from deleting the first row and the first column. Uh, so the matrix of this two by two sub the determinant of this two by two submatrix here is seven minus lambda times five minus lambda minus zero times minus two, but that's zero, and so I'm already done here. Uh, this is of course a very simple case where I have the characteristic polynomial uh, polynomial standing right in front of me. Uh, in its uh, decomposition into linear factors, and so I can just read the roots of this polynomial from this representation. So I can see that one root is 3, one root is 5, and the third one is 7. So these are my three eigenvalues. They are all distinct, and uh, I can now go ahead and find the corresponding eigenvectors. So I have to solve the system of equations m1 minus so yeah this is the if the determinant of this matrix is equal to 0 this means that for example it is 0 for lambda equal to 3 yeah lambda equal to la lambda 1 uh, this means that i can find a non trivial vector let's call it v1 because it corresponds to lambda 1 I can find a non-trivial vector, meaning a vector that has not all zero entries, such that I have a zero vector on the right-hand side. This is the system of equations I'm now going to solve for the entries in V1. So in order to, um, to invoke your, your, your memory of, of, of high school, I'm going to write x1, x2, x3 here for the vector, for the vector V1. These are the entries we now want to determine. Okay, so we do this in the fashion that we've uh, learned in uh, solving systems of linear equations. So first, uh, first off, we're going to determine the matrix M1 minus lambda 1i. Um, so I just have to subtract 3 on the main diagonal. Right? So 3 minus 3 is 0, 0, 0. The right hand side is 0. Um, 2, 7 minus 3 is 4, minus 2, 0, minus 2, 0, 5 minus 3 is 2, 0. Now I can go ahead and row reduce. Um, well, obviously, first I'm going to add the third row to the second, because that's doing something nice here. Uh, it's annihilating the first and third entry, yeah, 2 plus minus 2 and minus 2 plus 2. Um, and I can divide this already by minus 2 to give me 1, 0, and minus 1 and 0. Okay, now I can finally divide this by 4 to get a system 
zero one zero one zero minus one zero. <coughs> what does this say? Remember, this is the system of equations where we're coming from here. And we have through elementary row operations reduced the system to this. But still, it is a system of equations. So what's standing here is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1 times x1, x2, x3 equal to 0, 0, 0. Yeah? And this vector x1, x2, x3, of course, is the vector v1, our first eigenvector we're looking for. So we just multiply this out. <clears throat> the first row was trivial. The second row says x2 is equal to 0. The third row says x1 minus x3 is equal to 0, or in other words, x1 is equal to x3. And therefore, I can determine my first eigenvector as uh, x1 and x3 have to be the same. I can pick them as 1 and 1. It doesn't matter. Uh, I could pick them as 1 half and 1 half, or as 5,000 and 5,000. The main thing is they have to be the same. x2 is 0. Now I can convince myself that this vector indeed solves the system of equations here, either in this form, in this form here, or in this form here. Okay. The second one, lambda 2 equal to 5, corresponds to the system of equations m1 minus 5 times the identity times the second eigenvector is equal to 0. Or, I subtract 5 on the main diagonal, uh, 3 minus 5, that's minus 2, 0, 0, right hand side 0. 2, 7 minus 5, that's 2, minus 2, 0, minus 2, 0, 5 minus 5, that's 0, and 0 on the right hand side. Now, I can, of course, simply add the third row or the second, or the first to the, to the second, and I get uh, 0, 2, minus 2, and 0. I can divide by minus 2 here to give me 1, 0, 0, 0. And I can now subtract the first row from the third to give me 0, 0, 0, 0. Oops. OK. Uh, divide this one by 2. Um, to result in 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. Again, as before, what is standing here? Um, it follows that x1 is equal to 0, and from this line it follows that x2 minus x3 is equal to 0, or x2 is equal to x3. So, therefore, we obtain the second eigenvector as 0. x2 and x3 must be the same, so I can write 1 and 1 here, or 5,000 and 5,000. The two must be the same. Um, why can I just multiply an eigenvector by any number and still have an eigenvector? You can very quickly convince yourself that this is the case. Remember the defining equation for eigenvalues and eigenvectors, that the matrix multiplication with the vector is equal to a scalar multiplication of the vector. And therefore, if you are so inclined to multiply your vector with some multiple r, which can be any number, um, then uh, you can write this, because this is, this is all linear and this is just a scalar, you can write this as r times a v. Then you can use that v is an eigenvector, so this is r times lambda v. And then you can use that multiplication here uh, commu is commutative, and therefore this is lambda times r of v. And so you see that uh, that rv still is an eigenvector. Yeah. 
So I'm just writing one and one here for convenience. I could write anything as long as the two entries are the same. Okay, last one. Lambda 3 equal to 7. We have to solve the system of equations. m1 minus 7 times the identity times the unknown vector v3 is equal to the zero vector in r3 on the right hand side. And so I have to subtract uh, 7 on the main diagonal and I'm going to do this over here. 3 minus 7, uh, that would be roughly minus 4, 0, 0, 2, 7 minus 7, that is 0, minus 2, minus 2, 0, 5 minus 7, that's minus 2 again, and I have, of course, zeros on the right hand side. Okay, I add the third row to the second to give me 0, 0, minus 2, plus minus 2, that would be minus 4, uh, 0. I, I divide by minus 2 here, this gives me 1, 0, 1, 0, and I divide by minus 4, and the first row, this gives me 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, now I divide by minus 4 here. This gives me 0, 0, 1, 0. Well, and now I realize that the, that the third row here is the sum of these two guys, so it doesn't contain any new information here, so I can just, uh, I can just subtract the first row from this one and then subtract the second row here from this one and I'm going to get a trivial row that does not contain any information. What is standing here? This one says that x1 is equal to 0 and this one says that x3 is equal to 0 and x2 can be whatever it likes and so I have my vector v3 uh, first entry 0, third entry 0, and the second one can be anything, so let's write a 1 for convenience, and we have the third eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue 7. Okay, now I'm going to write the matrix P. This is the matrix that consists of the eigenvectors and columns. So, first one, 1, 0, 1, right here. Second one, second one, second one, second one, there, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, third one, zero, one, zero. All right. Remember that the eigenvalue decomposition says that the matrix M1 can be written as the product of a matrix P times a matrix lambda times a matrix P inverse and lambda is the matrix that contains the eigenvalues on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Yeah. This is the matrix P. This contains the eigenvectors ve that correspond to the three eigenvalues V1, V2, V3. This is lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. Now, we can use any ordering here as long as the orderings in lambda and p are consistent. So we could write the third um, column first, and then the first, say, and then the second, but then we would also have to put the, the eigenvalue 7 first in the diagonal, and then the eigenvalue three and the eigenvalue one and then the eigenvalue two. Uh, so the point is that that the ordering doesn't matter as long as it's the same in lambda and in p. Um, the only thing that's now left for me to determine is p inverse. Right. So uh, what's the inverse of p? We do this. Um, we do this in longhand as we learned. One zero one zero one one. 0, 1, 0, and we write a 
an identity on the right hand side. And now we go ahead and row reduce until we have an identity on the left hand side. Okay, so all right, I'm going to subtract the first row from the third. So the first row is my pivot, so nothing happens to it. Um, the second is not involved in this step. The third one gets the first one subtracted. So 1 minus 1 is 0, that's what I wanted. Uh, 1 minus 0 is 1, 0 minus 0 is 0, 0 minus 1 is minus 1, 0 minus 0 is 0, 1 minus 0 is 1. Okay. Now I want to have a 0, 1, 0 column in the second column here on the left hand side. Uh, in order to achieve that, I am going to subtract the second row from the third. So the first one is not involved in this step. Second row is the pivotal row. It's not going to change. The third one gets the... Uh, excuse me, I want to do this the other way around. Um, no, that's right. The, the third one gets the, the second subtracted. So uh, 0 minus 0 is 0. Uh, 1 minus 1 is 0. That's what I wanted. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Minus 1 minus 0 is minus 1. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. And 1 minus 0 is 1. All right. Now I want to have the third column on the left-hand side equal to the third standard basis vector 0, 0, 1. So first off, I'm going to now add the third row to the second. The first one is not involved in this step. It remains the same. The third one is my pivot, so um, but I want to divide, of course, by minus 1 or multiply by minus 1 later, so I'm not going to write it down now. I'm just going to do this addition here, which is going to give me the second row, 0, 1, yeah, 0 plus 0, 1 plus 0, 1 plus minus 1, that's 0, that's what I wanted. 0 plus minus 1 is minus 1, minus 1, uh, excuse me, 1 plus minus 1 is 0, and 0 plus 1 is 1. And now I multiply by minus 1 here to get 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 1 minus 1. So now this matrix here is my p inverse as we can check because p inverse times p is of course the identity and if I did things right then if we multiply this out 1 0 0 minus 1 0 1 1 1 minus 1 with the matrix P, which is this one, one zero one, zero one one, and zero one zero. Now, one times one is one plus 0 times 0 is still 1, plus 0 times 1 is still 1. 1 times 0 is 0, plus 0 times 1 is 0, plus 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0, plus 0 times 1 is 0, plus 0 times 0 is 0. And now I continue in the same fashion in the second row, but I'm not going to draw lines because that's going to get too messy. Um, minus 1 times 1 is minus 1, plus 0 times 0 is still minus 1, plus 1 times 1 is minus 1 plus 1 is 0. Minus 1 times 0 is 0, plus 0 times 1 is 0, plus 1 times 1 is 1. Minus 1 times 0 is 0, plus 0 times 1 is 0 plus 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1 plus 1 times 0 is 0 plus minus 1 times 1 is plus 1 minus 1 is 0. 
1 times 0 is 0, plus 1 times 1 is 1, plus minus 1 times 1 is 0. And finally, 1 times 0 is 0, plus 1 times 1 is 1, plus minus 1 times 0 is still 1, and it checks out. So we are done. We have found the eigenvalue decomposition, and we can now write it in its full glory as m1 is equal to, again I'm writing p lambda p inverse, so this is um, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, the three eigenvectors, times 3, 5, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, this is the diagonal matrix of the eigenvalues, times the inverse, which we have found to be 1, minus 1, 1, the inverse of p, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and minus 1. And now you can convince yourself at home by doing matrix multiplication in this fashion here that indeed the resulting matrix is the one that was originally given. So 3, 0, 0, 2, 7, minus 2, minus 2, 0, 5. All right, that was the first case.